I grew up in a very sporty family. Both my parents studied sports at ETH and I played handball. I was quite competitive before and, and sporty as well. I loved snowboarding, for example, as well, volleyball and so on. This is Samuel Kunz, a young man whose life changed completely from one second to the next. It changed forever. I'm a quadriplegic. That means I'm paralyzed. I can't move my fingers and my legs. He had an accident a few years ago and is living in a wheelchair ever since. In this episode of the ETH podcast, you will get to know Samuel. You'll hear his story and you'll hear about how his sporty spirit brought him to compete in a virtual car race by using his mind and thoughts. My name is Jennifer Kakshori. I meet Samuel at ETH Hönkerberg in a large, bright room. He's sitting in his wheelchair in front of a black screen. I get excited for these test runs. I like competition and that's what I'm looking forward to. Samuel is preparing for the Cybathlon. That's an international competition for people with disabilities who use technical assistance systems such as BCI, Brain Computer Interface. BCI can't read thoughts, but with the assistance of many sensors and electrodes, thoughts can steer a virtual car. Before the test run at ETH, a few people are in the lab room. Everyone seems very focused on what they're doing. Someone is connecting wires to Samuel's head. This is kind of the standard preparation procedure. What we do is filling each electrode with a gel and the gel is making sure that the sensor has very good contact with the skin. It's a white cat, it looks a bit like a bathing cap, and on this cap you have 120 electrodes measuring the participant's brain activity. Rea Lena is the team manager of the ETH researchers and pilots, as well as partners from industry regarding the BCI race at Cybathlon. I talked to her in the hallway while Samuel prepares for the test run. Cybertron is like a unique opportunity for patients to compete against each other in daily life activities. There are different categories and we are competing in the brain-computer race interface. Actually, it was part of um, Cybertron 16 as well, but the conditions have changed a little bit. They have made it even, even more difficult because Previously, there were only three different commands, and now there are four. So they had added one command where the pilots have to react on an immediate stimulus on the screen. So during the whole race, at some point, there might be the whole kind of racetrack turning black, and then the participant needs to immediately turn on the lights of his car. And that's really hard because you cannot foresee it, you cannot plan it. You need to react immediately, and that's really difficult. Samuel is ready to race. He's wearing a white cap that looks like a swimming hat with many wires coming out. The game is called Brain Driver. Samuel looks at his computer screen, and on the screen there's a curvy street. What I do is I give commands to a computer. For example, in this race it's left, right, lights on, or just no signal at all. And you have to give those signals at the right moment. In this program, it's a car that runs down a road and I have to control the car and make a left turn, a right turn. Can you explain how you make the left turn, right turn, and how you control? Mm -hmm. These signals, I have to th always think the same thing and they measure the, the brain signals in that moment and then I have to repeat that in a race. So when I make a left turn... I imagine my left hand in my head and clutch my hand, my fingers. I try to make a fist, but only in my head, not with my real hand. As I'm paralyzed, it's not even possible. But I still have an image of my hand in my head and I make a fist in my head with my hand. And how do you turn on the lights? Before, we, we tried to, to clutch both hands but that didn't work, so 
now it's um, I have to move my feet. I still have an image of my feet in my brain and I try to wiggle with my toes and move my feet to do that. And you do that at the same time, like making a fist in your hand, like if the lights need to stay on because it's dark on the screen? Or how can I imagine that? No, I mustn't move my fingers or my hands at that moment, just my feet, as it's in another part of the brain, in the motoric cortex, I think, and the feet are in another position, another place. So I really have to hold my fingers still and just move my feet. Ready, set, go. The race begins and it's pretty quiet. Ria Lena is commenting for me. The whole track seems to be so black today, dark. Okay, now it's now it's the dark part of the track. Now he has to turn on the lights. Come on, Sammy. Now he has to relax to go straight. So his time is 170 seconds. And whenever you are below four minutes, you are not disqualified. If you are beyond, you are disqualified immediately and you cannot go uh, move on to the next. So there are usually semi-finals and so on. So, But this time is actually already quite good. I didn't imagine the race to be so silent. But of course, if you're navigating by thought, you really need to be extra focused. Think of your legs to go straight, relax at the same time, to turn right, imagine to clench your right hand, to turn left, same thought. With the left hand. Are you happy with your result? Yes, I am, but we cheated this time. <laughs> How did you cheat? Um, well, you can adjust the help from the, the computer. And the computer helped me quite a lot this time, so I didn't do much myself. <laughs> but it was your first training today, so I guess it's okay if the computer helped you. Yeah, but it's not fair for the competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, at Cybertron, there will be no help at all. And so uh, I have to train to be able to control the car without help. After a break, there's another test run. I'm only watching and not asking any questions this time. It's very silent. Samuel is navigating. I can see the car on the screen scraping the wall on the left and then slowing down. This test run seems a bit more troublesome. Pilot Samuel's vehicle finally reaches the finishing line. Yeah, this result wasn't good at all. I would not even have made the qualification, so um, I'm not really happy with this result here. Yeah, it's 3.09. To qualify, you need 2.80. Yeah, so there's a lot, lot of work to be done still. The result um, of today also really shows that you should not underestimate... Um, the influence of an audience mm -hmm. kind of standing around you and looking at you. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah, really that's tough. At the Cybertron, this will be the big challenge. The competition is going to take place in an ice hockey stadium with several thousand people watching. That also sounds exciting. It is, <laughs> but I hope uh, it will work better by then. Otherwise, it will be very, very frustrating. You're trying your best, but your car is just not moving. Yeah. But, you know, you can also blame some of us if it's not working, right? So it's not only you, it's also the algorithms. And the algorithms, it's like the researcher's responsibility. So it's not only you, it's also if we are too bad implementing the algorithms, then we would also, you would also not succeed. Yeah, I think uh, we both have uh, still a bit yeah. of work to do until then. Mm. No, you're doing great. Don't uh, <laughs> yourself up about Blame this. Blame us. Blame yeah. us. <laughs> it's, it's really As you can hear, the team is very supportive of Samuel. It also is somewhat an intimate situation, sitting in a wheelchair, thinking about how you move your hands, feet, legs, using that brain ability that used to work, and now the only thing that's really moving is a computer game car and everyone in the room is staring at exactly this one moving vehicle as it's finding its way on the curvy roads. 
Samuel Kunz is part of the cyberthlon in the BCI brain-computer interface race for people with quadriplegia because of an accident he had five years ago. I um, was in Zurich in Oberlechten. I slipped and I fell into the Limmat, into the river, head first, out of, I don't know, two or three meters. And there was um, a concrete thing just below the water surface. And I landed on it head first, as I said. And from that moment on, I, I don't remember anything. I was unconscious. And two days after, I woke up in Universitätsspital Zurich. The diagnosis was um, paralyzed from neck down. The first time I woke up, I was with my parents, actually. So um, at least I felt a bit comfortable, but, but still um, to wake up and not be able to move anything, just your head, that was, uh, was tough. And was that uh, something that they knew from the beginning, that this is what it is, that it's tetraplegia and there's nothing one can do? Actually, at the beginning, the chances are quite high or they existed. Some functions may come back. So it is possible that you, after two or three months, you're, you will be able to move your fingers again or your hands or... Some people go to rehab and they, they are able to walk again. It's time that tells, and uh, in my case, I didn't improve a lot. I gained a bit of strength, but no functions came back. Samuel had to stay at the hospital and rehabilitation center for a long time. Right during that phase, Rhea was searching for pilots for her virtual car race. Someone told her that Samuel might be the person she's looking for. He's a physiotherapist at one hospital and he has worked with Sammy during his recovery process. And he already told me, look, this is the guy you need. Because probably I think he just thought he has the perfect mindset for becoming a pilot. And then I got his name and when I actually contacted him, I found out that I... I Yeah, I know him from somewhere. And then when I, when I actually met him the first time, um, yeah, he remembered that we once played a volleyball tournament together. And that really, of course, it helped to also have a bit of a personal relationship. And uh, yeah. Back then they played volleyball together and now they teamed up again. She as a researcher and manager, him as a quadriplegic pilot. Samuel has a few more weeks to train before the Cybathlon. Relaxing is just as important as practicing. How will he relax right before the competition? My best results until now I had when I took a little nap before. Maybe I will try to nap before the BCI competition. But if I'm able to do that, I don't know, maybe I go into a quiet room and just calm down try to relax as much as possible. But there will be people cheering in the stadium while you're in the race. Do you have a technique yet of how you don't let them influence your thoughts and how you don't get yourself stressed out by that? Nope, I don't have a, any concept or strategy to do that. I, I'm not sure how, how it will affect me. I hope it will be as in a in a handball game. I was able to focus just on the game and on my teammates and opponents and I was able to to ignore all the people around completely. So I really hope that I'll be able to do that at the Cybertron as well. It's not only about Samuel and his sporty mind that he's part of the Cybertron. He has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and has a technological interest as well. From my background as a mechanical engineer, I'm very interested in new technologies. And it's a technology that might someday even help me. Or even if it doesn't, it may help other people that are in an even worse situation than I am. So that motivates me and 
I thought I still have a lot of spare time, so I thought why not and if it's possible not to go out to Zurich every week, if the time is manageable for me, I thought yeah, why not give it a try and I also like competitions as I had a many before my accident and it's a chance to compete against others again. So that's my motivation. Samuel tells me that he has high hopes in the technology that maybe one day it would be possible to control an exoskeleton. He also knows that that might still take a very long time. Rea, the leader of the research team, isn't happy yet with the current state of the system. For really bringing it to daily practice and making it relevant for, for example, for Samuel, there's so much work that has to be done. Because imagine our system works with an accuracy of 60 to 90 percent. And imagine now Sammy going to the streets and actually wanting to navigate his wheelchair with our system. That's just too dangerous, right? So we are still developing our technology. While the group at ETH is working with electrodes outside the brain, maybe it would be even better to work directly inside the brain. And especially companies and also some other labs, they are looking into invasive options where you actually have very, very small electrodes implanted into the participant's brain and then the signal-to-noise ratio is much better. So you would actually be able to pick up a better signal and in the end probably have better accuracies. But that's really future applications and of course it's invasive so it comes with many, many disadvantages. But we are really, really curious to see how it works. I mean, yeah, yeah. When I met Rea, she was living in Zurich. Right now, she's setting up a new program at Singapore ETH called Future Health Technologies. She will come back to Switzerland for the Cybathlon, the big international event for competitors like Samuel. Four years ago, when the Cybathlon was the first time, I watched it on TV already and was very interested. I didn't go there live, unfortunately, but... Yeah, I always thought, well, it would be something fun. Why not try it? But I didn't know how to become part of the team, so in the end it was luck. I am excited to go in this arena and compete in front of many people, but um, of course I am also nervous about it. What if I'm not as good as I hope I'd be? So... It's both. I am nervous about it, but I'm also excited. The Cybathlon will take place near the airport of Zurich in Kloten in the springtime. I cross my fingers for Samuel and his team. This was an episode of the ETH podcast, a lesson in seeing motivation and hope somewhere after a life-changing accident. My name is Jennifer Kakshuri. I produced this episode together with Tis Wachter's Audio Story Lab and Luki Fretz, our sound designer. <laughs>